This is part 1 of Angular CLI tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is Angular CLI, why should we use Angular CLI and the benefits it provides. Before watching this course, I strongly recommend to watch our Angular 2 tutorial for beginners course in which we have discussed all the basics of Angular. Once you have a good understanding of the Angular basics, it'll be easy for you to get the most out of this Angular CLI course. First, let's understand why should we use Angular CLI and what problems it solves. If you have any experience with Angular, then you already know manually setting up an Angular application from scratch is laborious and time-consuming process. There are several steps. The first step is to create the application folder and add the required configuration files. If you look at the application that we have been working with throughout Angular 2 tutorial for beginners course, this is the folder Angular 2 demo is our application folder and within this folder we have got several configuration files. The most important one is this package.json file which contains the Angular dependencies and we also have other configuration files like tslint.json, bsconfig.json. We'll discuss what these configuration files are and their purpose in our upcoming videos. For now understand that the first step to manually set up an Angular application is to create the application folder and add the required configuration files. Next, we need to install all the required packages using the node package manager. So here within Visual Studio, I have opened that package.json file and notice here we have dependencies and dev dependencies. All these packages needs to be installed using node package manager. So this is our second step. Next, create the root application component app component. So if you look at this project right here, the root component for this project is present in this file app.component.ts and by convention the root component is called app component. Every Angular application should have at least one component which is the root component and this root component bootstraps the Angular application. Next, create the root application module app module. So if you look at this project, the root application module is present in this file app.module.ts and by convention the root application module is called app module. Next, create main.ts file which is the entry point to our application. So if we look at that file in this project, it's right here main.ts and notice here we have code to load the root application module app module. So if we look at this app module, notice here we have included our root application component app component as part of the bootstrap array. By doing this, we are telling Angular that the bootstrapping component is our root application component app component. So Angular creates an instance of this component and then obviously this component also has got a view template. So Angular is going to insert this HTML within our application host page which is index.html. So naturally our next step is to create that index.html. Now the obvious question that comes to our mind is where within index.html is Angular going to insert this HTML. Now if you look at this component right here, our root component, it has this selector my app and if you look at our index.html which is right here, we are using that component selector as an HTML tag right here. So within this location, our root components view template will be inserted. So that's how an Angular application bootstraps and as you can see manually setting up an Angular application from scratch is time consuming and laborious. Not only that, every time we have to create a component, pipe, service, directive, routing guard, etc. We'll have to write that same boilerplate code. Let me explain what I mean by boilerplate code. For example, to create a component, we have to create a class, export that, decorate this class with at component decorator and obviously to be able to use this at component decorator we'll have to import it from angular core. So we have to write all this boilerplate code. Similarly to create a service we have to again create a class, export it, decorate it with at injectable decorator and we also have to import that injectable from angular. So every time we have to create a component, pipe, service, directive, routing guard, we have to write all this boilerplate code. Writing that same boilerplate code over and over again is not only monotonous 
but also time consuming and error prone. In a real world application, we will have many components, pipes, services, directives, etc. So just imagine the amount of time we waste writing that same boilerplate code. In a real world, we usually have more than one developer working on a given Angular project. While all these developers are creating these different files and writing the required boilerplate code, are they following the Angular team's best practices and conventions? What if the developers are not following them? How do we enforce them? Well, one way to enforce these is by manual code reviews. Manual code reviews are not only time consuming, they are also error prone. The other option is to have some tooling in place. Angular CLI is such a tool. It helps us create Angular applications, components, modules, pipes, directives, services and much more with great speed and consistency while still following the Angular team's best practices and conventions. So what is Angular CLI? Angular CLI is a command line tool that helps us create Angular applications faster and with great consistency. Create the boilerplate code for Angular features like components, directives, pipes, services, etc. We can also create boilerplate code for TypeScript features like classes, interfaces, enums, etc. It follows Angular team's best practices and conventions out of the box. Run unit and end-to-end -end tests. Create optimized builds for deployment to production. We'll see all these in action in our upcoming videos. No doubt Angular CLI will greatly help us improve our productivity as it can get an Angular app up and running in no time. However, to get the most out of this tutorial and to understand what CLI does, it is better to first learn how to manually create an Angular project from scratch. Also learn how to manually create components, pipes, services, modules, etc. Once you have a good working knowledge of how these different pieces fit together in an Angular application, we can then use tools like Angular CLI to boost our productivity. Otherwise, if there is a problem with a feature generated by Angular CLI, then it might take a very long time to identify what is wrong and fix it. We have covered the basics of Angular in our Angular 2 course. I'll include the link for the course in the description of this video. In our next video, we'll discuss installing Angular CLI. Thank you for listening and have a great day.